So, welcome to uh, another edition, episode, uh, iteration of uh, Matinee Prices. Again, I'm Huru. Uh, that's my boy over there, Cameron. Uh, and today we have not just a special guest. This is, we'll have other special guests. This is basically like the third member of the team, the guy we had been talking about earlier. Uh, uh, I. As you know, I'm like, I'm a fan of movies, I talk about movies and all that, but these two guys to the right of me, they're like IMDB before IMDB. Uh, and that was another reason why, we, you know, I latched onto them so so quickly once I met them, uh, again through VizArt. Uh, but, you know, you'll know that and you'll, before with Cameron and you'll know that just a minute with uh, this third member um, who we're getting ready to introduce. And, um, so we've got uh, VizArt Connection and Love of Movies Connection, and we've got uh, a very special uh, film, movie, documentary to talk about that's related to all of this. Uh, but first off, we've got uh, our good friend to introduce. This is, uh, this is our boy Raleigh. Hey. Um, yeah, and uh, we all, uh, the three of us all met through VizArt, but uh, before we gave Cameron and I gave us our uh, introduction while basically we're sitting here on the couch talking about movies so we're gonna let uh, Mr. Raleigh uh, do the same uh, so yeah take it away um, hey guys I'm Raleigh um, oh, geez, I'm freezing <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so um, what uh, do you remember uh, can you remember like the specific moment or like the first movie you saw where it changed you from just being like someone who watched movies to like someone who was like okay this is my thing like the first movie you saw as a kid or like the first movie you remember seeing or like that oh, movie wow. that kind of changed um, you yeah. it, it probably goes back to Empire Strikes Back and Man. you know being a young child in, in the movie theater and, and seeing that opening sequence and, and, and just being completely awed uh, and then, you know, I mean, that that probably started my love of movies. Empire Strikes Back. It's still my favorite movie to this day. Um, but, um, <clears throat> you know, as a kid, uh, we didn't have cable for a really long time. And uh, we would go to the video store like five times a week. And I would just pour through uh, the video store aisles and, you know, grab whatever cover looked cool. And uh, I didn't have those overprotective parents that that said, oh, that movie's rated R, you can't see that. You know, my dad would, like, foster my interest in horror films or classic films of, you know, you know, black and white 1950s film noir stuff or especially sci-fi. You know, um, that's pretty much where my love of films um, started. <coughs> um, as far as... Um, jeez. Oh, when did... Um, when, uh, when did you start working at Vizart? Oh, geez, I started working at Vizart uh, after uh, being fired from a really crappy job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in about uh, what '07, I started working at Vizart. So you were there for the tail. You were there for the tail end. You saw the demise. Oh yeah, I saw the the demise of the the video uh, industry firsthand. I mean, I I, I helped close five Vizart videos yeah. over my career there, and uh, you know that was very sad. Uh, uh, you know, to lose that kind of culture as a resource, uh, just just watch it go away. And I don't think anything's really rep replaced that at, at this point. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you have Netflix and, and websites like Rotten Tomatoes to go to, but like to, uh, and I think this is what you guys are trying to do, uh, to have an outlet where you can go that's kind of, um, you know, um, you know, fairly informal, but to have people that that know uh, their films and have a, a taste and uh, you know a knowledge, an encyclopedic knowledge uh, of films. So like to like what we used to do, you know, like we were IMDb pretty much. You know, people would be like, oh, 
it's a, it's a movie that I saw one time, and it starred this person, and I thought it was really good, but it was on really late at night, <laughs> and, and I fell asleep, and I want to finish that movie. And can you tell me what that film is, you know? And, and we would figure it out. And, and we, figure would, it out. we would figure it out for him, yeah. and, uh, and then suggest, you know, five or ten other movies to go with it. Yeah. Uh, it was usually Silkwood. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like, no, you're thinking of Silkwood. Either Silkwood or Rawhide Rex. <laughs> you know, it's going to be one of the two. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> You know, that was, I, I feel like uh, that's why I'm here today, uh, because we're trying to give you a similar, um, you know, I feel like that's why we're here today, because we're trying to give you a similar experience as to go into the video store. I mean, we can't hand you the film, but maybe we can steer you in the right direction to an interesting experience. Talking um, about a movie you've never heard of, or maybe something you meant to see a long time ago but never got around to it, or just uh, it's kind of open your mind a little bit. Since it's closed, luckily we, these gentlemen and I, have been in close proximity with each other, so we we've, we've continued basically doing this. What we're gonna be sharing with you uh, and we on camera, yeah, and we sh we share movies. Like it, I'll, it, I'll come across I'll, something and lend it to these guys, yeah. and vice versa. We, we, we've just continued doing we it. All have basically, our own libraries, libraries. basically. We, we've done the store without the store. Uh, <laughs> and that's what the show. And that's what the seven. show is. Yeah, it's, and that's and that's what we're doing here with you. Uh, yeah, where did I forget? Where did you come from? Before just before you hit, like, where did you move from? Uh, I moved from uh, Pennsylvania uh, in the. The depths of the Pocono Mountains. <laughs> that's, that's, how did you wind up from there to Vizor? Um, I, you know, I, I had actually, um, I, I was a mailman and I hated my job. And I, a friend of mine had moved down here for college, and I moved down. Uh, I, you know, I, I came to visit him. Yeah. And I said, "This is a great town." And he took me to Vizor, and he showed me that, and. He showed me the the Cat's Cradle, which is a, a local music venue that gets great acts sometimes, uh, and uh, a few other things in town. And I said, you know what? I, I really I have to move here. And um, it just so happened, you know, I got a, a, a crappy job uh, just to pay the bills, uh, and I lost that job. Uh, and uh, you know, feeling sad, I said, I'm going to go um, rent a movie. And uh, uh, you know, I just inquired to. Uh, the girl behind the counter, uh, a friend of ours, Laura. Now uh, I know, uh, and she gave me uh, a, an application. Yeah. And on that application, uh, it, it asked you all about you know your favorite films and what films you've watched recently. And uh, I guess uh, that's uh, what impressed them. <laughs> I will say uh, this about Vizart: like um, working at Vizart and um, working there for years and years, and I, I actually did some of the hiring in the later years I hired, was able to hire a couple of people and I will say this like nothing really on the application mattered except what are your three favorite movies and what are the last five movies you've seen right you could you could say like <laughs> oh I have nine felonies yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah and I'm wanted in eight states but if the but if your three favorite movies impressed us yeah. and the last five movies you saw were good we'd be like all right well this guy's wanted by the law for like drug trafficking yeah. but he's got fucking great taste in movies that's hard him right now but like there for the end once we hired like the newest person that we had hired once we had closed had been there for two and a half years so I mean, we're talking about a video store place with no benefits and low pay. But and people like, would work there for years. We, like the, because, we, I was there till it closed. He yeah. was there till it closed. You we were are. there for forever. Like the people were still applying but nobody had left. Yeah, we we were just you know between the the love of movies and the people we were working with who we knew had the love of mu movies and different styles and we all yeah. sort of overlapped and you know broke apart and the one girl we worked with you know loved nature documentaries to death and right as the time when I'm like all right we're not throwing another one holy crap that's awesome yeah. you know <laughs> like she would throw it on I'm like which one is that and keep going so that's these are people we we work with every day, and and it wasn't just a job because uh, you didn't get paid very well at all. But it, we love movies, and we love talking about it, love watching it. So that's that's why we're here, and that's uh, why we brought in 
uh, Mr. Riley, who you're going to be seeing a whole lot more um, well, as so we as we branch yeah. off into other things and other places. We'll be going to different locations and doing stuff. Uh, but tonight we're going yeah, to let's, let's get into it, man. Let's tonight we're talking channel. about the reason we we have all three viz artists here and that sort of viz art energy. The movie we're talking about today is a documentary called Z Channel, uh, which is it's basically what we're doing and what we're talking about. This is this is a, uh, a channel that was in L.A. that played one of the first pay cable pay channels. cable channels that that played everything it could get its hands on. Uh, not just schlockiness, although there was a touch of that as well. They, they, um, Z Channel, I'd say Z Channel. Um, made a lot of film geeks because you know the documentary itself it's like the people that they interview are Alexander Payne and Quentin Tarantino and all these guys who like they weren't part of the film school revolution of the 70s and early 80s with like Spielberg and Scorsese right. but they're the kids who grew up watching those movies they would be the the children of yeah yeah obviously not biologically but and they they the next generation of they found these movies and learned that they were film geeks because of the stuff that they were seeing on the Z channel and it was essentially a little just a little backstory before we get into the movie Z channel was a uh, cable channel it was specific to the Los Angeles area in California but unlike um, like HBO or Cinemax Z channel would show uncut foreign films in their entirety they show, they would show the director's cut of Once Upon a Time in America the director's cut of uh, The Leopard you know, Das Boot. Das Boot. They would, um, they would have retrospectives. They would do like an entire day where they would play nothing but Fellini films. If I could interject, I mean, please uh, do. Uh, yeah. According uh, to this documentary and, and uh, uh, other accounts, uh, I believe we Wikipedia did this before. Um, uh, the gentleman who uh, programs Z Channel, who the, the documentary is also about, Jerry Harvey. Uh, we'll get into that a little later, maybe. Um, but they pioneered the director's cut. They were the first. To even that term uh, didn't even seeks exist. out yeah. uh, a director's cut of a film, um, because you know Jerry was, uh, uh, you know, maybe the most uh, hardened film geek that you could ever come across. Uh, uh, he would like he we would befriend uh, directors and and uh, he would hear of a, a a movie that had been butchered by the studio and he would go out of his way and, and, and spend hours tracking down. Uh, a pristine original director's cut that he would show on his channel and and, and uh, would you know Ballyhoo and Fanfare and the magazine uh, you know really promote and and this caught on um, also uh, letterboxing uh, was also um, something that they uh, pioneered uh, I mean can you imagine uh, trying to watch like Ben Hur uh, the Charlton Heston one, or Lawrence of Arabia, or, or, or Lawrence of Arabia, These great movies on, that on were a shot little square millimeter. TV, uh, where they cut off. You're missing literally like thirty or forty percent of the movie just so they could crop it to make your fit your TV screens. But Z Channel, like with director's cut, they were like, if you're not seeing the entire movie the way the director intended, then what's the freaking point? Well, what's the point? And um, so, like I said, they kind of birthed film geeks. They like. They were. They had their specific audience, and and, um, and remember, we're talking about a, the bulk of these movies were either not released or barely released. You and, know, seen yeah. in like maybe L.A. and New York. That would be. You'd it. have to go to an art house theater, or you had, or you were in Europe and you caught like a Fellini retrospective or something. Yeah, but, so you um, had a, a town's worth of people who yeah. have seen who seen and this, this and said, said movie. And, and we're talking about it. before video stores even existed. You know, like you know, and by the you know eighties and nineties, you could you know go to the video store and rent these things. But in the late seventies, the like a video store wasn't even a thing. No. So um, early eighties, your options for seeing a movie were what they showed at your local theater or what they showed on TV. But it's not like you were going to see, you know, the the ten hour director's cut of Das Boot on TV they, they like they you wouldn't even see that in a theater no um, but Z Channel and uh, J uh, Jerry, Jerry Harvey was that his name? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Harvey. they were like just fanatical about making sure that people were seeing 
the movie as the director intended because they had a passion for it and it, it wasn't like they were just trying to fill hours on their programming schedule they like they were putting their heart and soul into this and um, the guy was a, a, a legitimate maniac when it came to movies and he just wanted to share that he wanted to share his passion with the world and he had a really great platform for it for for the short time that it was around uh, that being said uh, as uh, the the movie we're highlighting today, Z Channel, is actually uh, you know it, it's two stories. It's it's a horrible uh, you know Cameron said that he was a maniac uh, when it came to movies, but he was actually a maniac in real life too. Yeah, yeah like uh, uh, so so we're, we're talking about the uh, the the um, the happy uh, you know brilliant part of Z Channel that inspired so many people, uh, and unfortunately. Um, Jerry Harvey was a very troubled man uh, who eventually uh, murdered his wife and uh, then committed suicide. Uh, and uh, that's a, a big part of the documentary that yeah, we're, we're highlighting. And, and, and I think that we can't uh, forget about that. Although, um, what we really like about this documentary is how many movies that we haven't seen that this documentary about this channel has shown us. Uh, I'm seeking out some movies that I've, I've never even heard of before because I watched this movie and and you know that this channel through a documentary I, I you know I wasn't in LA in the early 80s at all uh, and I'd never heard about this uh, but you know I mean for instance I'd never even heard of Paul Verhoeven's Turkish delight before but it looks fantastic and perverted and I really want to see it I'm sorry. This is I'm hearing Bob. I'm like I'm hearing you talk about movies passionately, and then I'm hearing Bob Bob Devoe. Also. My bad. So <laughs> that's but that's this show. Um, um you know, I he, mean, yeah, he like, yeah. I mean, the, you, we you really can't say enough about this movie, and and we can't like say a specific thing that's gonna make you want to see this movie. It's like at this point, if you haven't seen this movie, if if you're watching this show and you enjoy what we're talking about you need to see this movie or you've already seen it. So I would say like find Z Channel. If it's on Netflix, find it. If you if they if they're streaming it for free on YouTube, find it. If you can find some clips somewhere, if you know somebody who has a DVD that you can borrow it from, this movie will introduce you to so many other movies. And as Raleigh was saying, it's two it's two it's two different movies basically. You're going to learn a lot about cinema and just kind of about the culture of like late 70s, early 80s, um, Los Angeles and um, these mavericks of cinema, but you also get this like tragic story of a man mentally unraveling who just wasn't quite right and just couldn't quite function in this world, but he had this thing that he was passionate about and had a great knowledge for. and. Um, just seemed like he was kind of a charming guy, you know, because he yeah. wasn't like he wasn't like a famous person, but like he would ingratiate himself and like kind of like get in these circles of famous people because they and and then it became well, like a was, symbiotic relationship. It was his where, wheelhouse. This exactly. Was, this was it. He found his 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 wheelhouse, his niche, his purpose for life. As as troubled as his life was, this was, you know, it was like kind of like us finding Bizart and like, oh, this is. You know, you don't get paid squat. There's no benefits. There's no 401k. No, 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 no. This is where I need to be. Yeah. Just surrounded by all these movies and films and learning, and then and then there are other people who are like, yeah, this is where this is where you need to be. You yeah. know, they didn't say that, but you you knew, and we all had that unspoken thing. This this documentary is the closest thing, and your your best. Uh, uh, example of a film critique class, a film appreciation class, uh, because all it does is speak to and of this gentleman, and, and other people as well, obviously this, he's not in a vacuum, uh, who worked at this, at this channel, at this station, that was about movies, and love of movies, and getting as much of it to as many people as possible because like these are all works of art or you know are you know artistic uh, expressions from not just one person not just the director not just the lead actor or actress but it's a lot of people go into making 
these things and they're meant to be seen uh, and a lot of times through various reasons money and a few people here and there uh, it gets to either no one or maybe just a handful of people so this guy uh, sort of went out his out of his way it was and basically gave his life literally you could say yeah. uh, to make sure that that didn't happen that these movies were seen and seen in the way that they were meant to be it, you know a lot of times like what they were talking about earlier all of these things if they were seen got cut up to the point that they were completely different from what they were the originally, theatric, the, and originally the, intended. The theatrical version of Once Upon a Time in America was butchered. It's it's bizarre how different the director's cut and like what they showed in the theaters was what they, they cut it down from like three hours and forty five minutes to like two hours and twenty minutes or something. Like if you watch the if you were to see the version of Once Upon a Time in America that was played in theaters in the early eighties, you'd be like, This movie freaking sucks. <laughs> if you would see the almost four hour director's cut, you'd be like, This is a masterpiece because they edited it to the point to where the movie basically made no freaking sense. Like entire plots and characters got cut out of the movie. You see the movie in its entirety and you're like, This is a work of art. And um, and that's what Z Channel was. It was like, you know, people need to see this version because this is what a movie belongs to the filmmaker, you know, it's ultimately it's his gift that he's giving you. And uh, and then to have someone else, like some studio head or, you know, like a, like some focus groups to come in and be like, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, a four hour movie is not going to play in American audiences. It's like, well, a lot of times it's not about that. It's about like showing people a good movie. And to the point, I mean, uh, um, once upon a time in America, um, they programmed, Z Channel programmed so that you could watch the uh, you know the butchered two-hour version, and then immediately watch the complete director's cut and, and draw your own conclusions. Uh, like that was the programming on this network. It's really quite amazing. Um, they you could find things like um, you know uh, film festivals devoted to a, a certain country or a certain director uh, that they would play all month long. They play say you know the films of Sam Peckinpah, uh, who um, had an um, you know, a, an amazing friendship with uh, Jerry Harvey over the years. Uh, they really connected, uh, and if you watch some of the bonus features, there's some great stories about Sam Peckinpah. Um, I'm not going to give it away, but it, it involves um, uh, uh, Federico Fellini and, uh, you know, uh, a, a really bad hangover from Sam, which <laughs> to, uh, to understand it is, is, was not an uncommon occurrence. We've, we've all been there. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, if, if you were one of the lucky people that were in the area, and, um, you know, I mean, people that, and, and, you know, directors and actors, uh, for instance, Quentin Tarantino said that he couldn't get Z Channel when he was a kid, but he, uh, you know, like, kind of like we are, uh, you know, we're learning about it because people had taped off of, of, uh, of that channel, and if and you the, wanted to see it. And the tapes. And, uh, you know, th they had the tapes at, at the video store that he worked at and uh, of the stuff that... Uh, it's actually on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're watching it behind yeah, yeah. We're filming for inspiration. It's on right now. But, uh, you know, in this documentary, you have, you know, great directors. Uh, like Paul Verhoeven talks about how, it, uh, you know, Z Channel really helped his career by getting his movie shown. And, you know, I mean, if it wasn't for Z Channel, we might not have had RoboCop. Or, or showgirls. <laughs> or showgirls. <laughs> All right. Two different <laughs> views on what you consider grateful. Um, I'm a little more grateful for RoboCop than I am for I think, every, I think everyone is. Well, well but, you know, showgirls, is, it, it has its place. It's, yeah. it's still a film, and a lot of people, you know, just like any other movie, a lot of people who go into making those things. And, uh, and you learn to appreciate that, if nothing else. But, I mean, we're talking about... Uh, a Safe Place, Atlas 74, a Bad Timing, Bad Timing I had never heard of. And I I'm, still haven't seen I'm that film. I'm dying to watch it's on, that. It's on my list of uh, movies that it's I gotta watch. Children of Paradise, uh, College, uh, you know, Fingers, Heaven's Gate, Images. It, it goes on and on. You know, Macabre and Mrs. Miller, The Moon's Our Home, all of these, just, just a few 
that are are mentioned. But you know, not not the stuff. I actually, own McKay, I'll let you borrow McCabe and listen to them. Oh, they really? Robert all those best films. Sweet. But they didn't play just that kind of thing. I mean, uh, so but they also would play Empire Strikes Back. They played Empire, Empire Strikes Back. They played Silver Streak. We got about three minutes here, guys. Just Porky's Two. Yeah, they would play Porky's Two. They would play something for everybody. You know, they would play the mainstream. It wasn't just like kind of like your underground, outside the box, you know, outside of Hollywood. Like I said, they would play, you know, you know, they would play Empire Strikes Back and stuff like that. So they kind of appealed to everybody, but like you essentially had to live within their viewing area. But the legacy lives on. I mean, you know, we're talking about today and we're just hopefully someone is watching this episode and they're going to be like, I really want to watch this documentary. And, um, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, Harvey would be proud. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it it's very sad and tragic that uh, his, his his life his ended, life was cut short. The, the ended the way it did, and and the wife of his the life of his wife. Yeah. Uh, as well, um, he was. And the documentary, you know, takes into account. It shows you some of the the notes that he wrote, where you you clearly see like he's not. He wasn't he, well. He's he's struggling. He's struggling. If he's not like absolutely on the movies and getting it and showing it and putting it out there, the moment there's you know sort of like the space in between where he's not doing that, he he had a hard time dealing with but with you life. But itself. you can't that you can't let that take away from like his contributions. Like he 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 left his mark and. Like, like you know, like we're saying, there, there are probably a lot of filmmakers who literally owe their career to this guy. Like, people saw their movies because of him, and because of that, those movies caught on. And then because of that, they were able to finance their next film, and now these are, like, brilliant filmmakers that everyone knows about. But maybe we wouldn't know about them otherwise. So, I'm going to say, like, yeah, we're, we're running out of time here, but I will say, in closing, Z Channel, great movie. Seek it out. Watch it. Check it out. Uh, yeah, it's a really great film. Uh, I'm glad that I, I turned these guys on to this film. Uh, Me too. Uh, you, did. you know, just a few closing uh, words here. Um, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll say we've, it's, it's this first one. So. We've said it. We've said it all. Well, so yeah, we'll we'll We're sign off for it. now. Uh, the matinee prices again. I'm. Guru, this is Cameron, and this is our boy Raleigh here, who you're going to be seeing a lot more of. Uh, thanks for putting up with my awkwardness in front of the camera, and uh, I'll try and work on that, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get him drunk next time. Yeah. Loos, loosen him up. And, and, and as we always say, we'll try to do better. We'll, and we'll try and do better next time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good night. Keep watching movies. <laughs>